Alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, just thought I'd do a quick um, updated video on, um, I've just done a, a quick dry assembly on how I think all my bits and pieces are going to fit in there and um, just a quick idea of, of how I think it's going to go and, and what I think of the kit so far. So, alright, let's get into it. Alright, first thing, um, I guess the reason why you know, most of us are all looking at this kit are, um, is the benefit of being flexible. Um, so very very easy to fold up lives in a lovely compact package so um, what they've done design wise there fantastic um, really really good um, exactly what I, I want it to be I want to be able to put it in my backpack and uh, and rack off and FPV and and do some you know, hopefully follow me shots and, and those sorts of things which is why I'm going with this particular power system um, yeah, so far, so good. Pretty happy with that. So, just thought I'd uh, show you some other things for a bit of scale so you guys can get an idea on, uh, on just how big this bad boy is. Um, so, this is next to my uh, homemade printer uh, style quad. Um, it's got a, a 230 wheelbase. Um, so, a little bit bigger again, not massively bigger. Um, so, again, that's fantastic. Uh, guys might have something similar this is one of the original hobby king 250 fpv racer frames again a little bit bigger package but um yeah in and around the same sort of size so quality of plastic i don't think the plastic's quite as nice as the uh, original hobby king um 250 um racing frame that's absolutely bulletproof um i've dropped that multiple multiple times and, and managed to get away with it um, but um, first little concern is the um, the pivot points for the front arms um, they're only made of very very thin plastic so I'll take this apart and sort of show you guys the inside of the, the workings of the thing these little arms here a couple of springs and by just ratcheting that around that's all that's holding that arm in position so I think a nice touch would have been to have quite a few of those in the kit for a Hobby King. Um, I really think that's going to be the first point that's uh, in a decent sized crash. I think they're just going to fall apart. So um, I love the idea of the whole sliding mechanism here. So I think they've done really, really well with that. Um, something else I've read a lot about on the forums is other guys having issues with um, binding in the tail area. Um, whether I've just got lucky or there was a difference in manufacture dates. Mine seems to be perfect, so hopefully that doesn't uh, bring in some slop later down the track. But um, only time will tell on that one. So, let's put this bad boy back together. Okay, get that out there. So, frame back together. Uh, just a quick uh, look at flight controllers and how much space we've got to play with. Uh, underneath, um, we've got uh, space for power distribution module. So if you want to solder your ESCs, um, your, your BECs and other bits and pieces to that, that's going to be a lovely option. I'm probably not going to use it. Um, I'm going to be using my modified version of um, my power module for my APM setup. Um, so you know, that way I get a, a little bit more functionality. So I probably won't be using the power module, but it is there for guys who do want to use it. Nice touch. Um, leads me to the flight bay. Um, originally I had hoped to get away with running a full size APM module. Um, that's a full size APM module. I was dreaming. That's never going to work. Um, luckily I've gone out and bought a smaller version of the APM module. Um, for those that want to know, uh, it's an RC timer board um, as opposed to buying the Hobby King version of the, the mini APM or the micro APM those guys do. I just felt that it was quite high priced um, and I already had a brace of, uh, of sensors for the APM and I'm able to make all my original APM stuff with a little bit of wiring work with uh, the RC timer board so um, that's the way I've gone for my power system hopefully it works out for me. A little disappointed in the way they've decided to mount their um, flight controller um, all they've done is given you a small piece of foam and that um, which the, the power, the, the spacings are, are perfectly done for their APM MIDI module. Doesn't fit 
anything else. I don't have any spacing that are, uh, are like that. So um, I'll be making something up with hopefully a little bit more vibration resi resilience than um, just a piece of foam. Um, then we get the little cage that sits over the top. Um, nice touch for um, protecting your, uh, your flight controller. But again, I'm using a full APM uh, GPS and compass module and um, yeah, whole spacing doesn't work for me. So again, something else I'll be mucking around with. So a um, couple of other things with the kit. Uh, I think Hobby King said the kit weighed in and around uh, 160 grams for the complete kit. So let's just see what it actually weighs without any kind of camera setup. So what else have we got here? That, 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 and that. Have we forgotten anything? Okay, so that's not too bad. A little bit out, but um, that's not going to kill anybody. Seven or eight grams. Happy with that. Okay, I guess that leads us to the camera mounts themselves. Um, some good, some bad. Um, not very happy with the Mobius mount. Um, mine, um, the screw in here doesn't really tighten up. Um, and also the aluminium that decided to use the, the screw out of is, is really bad quality and it's already started to burr out. So I'm really hoping they've used a better quality of aluminium in there. I'm not so sure, but um, we'll find out. The other thing I'm not really happy with is I don't really like my vibration balls in tension. I much prefer them in compression. So it's also 25 grams for that setup, um, which seems quite excessive for a camera that only weighs 40 grams. Um, on the little Peon 230 here, the Mobius mount only weighs 6 grams. So I think that's uh, more than enough for a Mobius. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit overkill and not happy with the design anyway. GoPro mount, on the other hand, I think they've really nailed it on here. Um, very, very well weighted. Um, I do like the fact that if you're flying around water or you're flying around um, something quite dusty, you're worried about running your frame naked, um, you do have the possibility of running your GoPro in its standard case upside down. The only thing you do have to worry for is you might have to just hog out a little bit of the back here because the case does touch, but nice touch. Excellent mount, in tension, um, so they've really got that one right. So, um, so yeah, I think um, all in all so far, that's, uh, they've done a, a pretty good job. So hopefully these videos are helping you guys out with um, either deciding to buy the kit or helping you guys put it together yourself. So, alright, talk to you soon. Bye.